Welcome to Premier Scene Podcast, where we share the passions of filmmaking by the people that make them. And here are Premier Scenes, Claire and Anthony Bueno. Hello. Hello. Oh, I need to go. Hello, hello, hello. We've got... We're us. We're us. We've got a... We've, we've Premier had a, Scene Refined. <laughs> yeah. We went, and actually, it's, um, it's been quite a busy couple of weeks hasn't it since really we uh, caught up last we've got coming up we've got um, Dumbo Children of the Snowland will be discussing the new DC um, film Shazam, Shazam. And, uh, and something a little probably a little more delicate at Eternity's Gate which I've not seen which, but I shall see the trailer yeah exactly you can share the trailer as, with as us as this is happening <laughs> in real time right, exactly all in real time <laughs> So the, the first film we're going to discuss is Dumbo because that's what's out at the moment. So we had the pleasure of going to see that. It didn't was. We? I have to say, I was quite disappointed that the rest of the Seven Dwarves weren't there. Um, <laughs> so I don't really know what Tim was thinking, but you know, if he wants to go against the grain, that's perfectly up to him. <laughs> and then you turned up. Oh, and it was a film about an elephant. And it's a flying fly. elephant. What a ridiculous notion. <laughs> It's like gorillas and dinosaurs, isn't that? Um, <laughs> Dumbo, which was magical. Yeah, it really, really was, it wasn't really it? Is. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, I found it. Uh, it's just like most people. I'm not a massive fan of CG, although I, I do feel as though it has its place. But it was. It was. A, it was a. It felt like a film where it fits, and it and it added this kind of layer of a kind of mystique and a kind of magic to it. That I that I really liked a lot about it. That worked very well, and that it's, there's more of story than than the animation. Well, and the, and the, and it felt kind of very Burton esque, but not. It, there without was a going departure. Over the top, yes, yeah, because yeah, you felt like it was his film without it being um, too far of a departure. But he kind of was also pushing his boundaries a little as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't, uh, you know, and like Big Fish was, was something that I felt was a lot like that. And if you ever say, oh, I can't remember the other one. Something Eyes. Oh, f- uh, Fish Eyes? No, that's, you're thinking of Big Fish. Oh, Big Fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah. No, the, it'll come to me. But it, yeah. that, again, they're kind of like, they're different from, you know, the, you know, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factories or the Edward Scissorhands. Batman celebrating its 30th anniversary this year it was yeah it just it had that that essence that kind of magic that he can normally bring to the cinema without it being all about big spirals and, and being really highly stylized but there's enough of it there to just to just sell this kind of concept and the kind of film it is and I think they try and sell it as like a good family film and that really is what it is it's just like it is that film that you can go and, and take to your kids you with you take uh, with your kids and and yeah, and enjoy it. And I, yeah, I enjoyed it more because I wasn't a massive fan of, of the original. I was going to say, I don't even remember seeing the original Dumbo. And it wasn't very long either. It was, I think it was like 50 minutes. Hour. Yeah, it's like, an, it's like an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes at the most. And I've never been a huge fan of it. Uh, it was always one of those ones I saw later in life rather than seeing it when I was very young. And then so it kind of builds up, almost like Mary Poppins, because it's never massively... You know, Bedknobs and Broomsticks is a fantastic film, and, and Mary Poppins never sold it to me. And it was the same with Dumbo. It was just like I don't quite. And even when I've seen it in latter years, it's it's enjoyable, but unlike something like Fantasia, which you kind of don't get when you're young, but when you get older, it's just like this is just like this is a work of art. You know, the work that's gone into that. So I, um, so so out of any of the Disney films, it was the one that I that it could definitely kind of expand on, which they do. You know, there's a huge. Like there's a massive ending to it. Now, whether that ever existed in any other early script or book or things like that, I don't know. But, it, it, you know, it worked for me, it worked for the film, so... And, and it was great. Tim, Tim Burton is always working with... Um, he's got these kind of staple actors that he enjoys working with. So we see the return of Michael Keaton, Danny DeVito, yeah. Eva Green, who kind of feel like she may have turned into his muse... Um, I mean, because yeah. she is she is stunning, yeah. and she's stunning in this film, and um, and her acrobatics are kind of beyond reproach, really. I, I mean, she, she she seemed very natural. We've got some interviews, haven't we? Oh, we do. That we that we're going to play, um, but. Um, should we start with Eva Green? If Let's as start with Eva. Uh, who was in this beautiful green dress, and uh, she looked. It was all sparkly, so she. 
really had dressed for for the occasion so and it's it's interesting that people just they you know actors love working with tim burton and i was able to speak to the producers of the film and i wanted to ask a little bit more about burton who um who started his life Oh, his work life in Disney as an animator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like come full circle. And they were saying as well, just how hands-on, even though Dumbo obviously is is computer animated, that didn't make him less involved in the whole process and wanting to closely direct the whole animation yeah. um, sequences. I, well, you've got Eva Green. I've got oh, Eva oh, Green fantastic. loaded up. Here we let's go. Give, let's give Eva Hand Green. Hand it to Eva. Yeah. You have such grace and poise when you're up on the trapeze. You almost feel like you're at home there. And I just wondered to the extent that you had to work to, to, to pull that off. Well, it's an illusion if I look very comfortable up there. No. I'm, I'm kidding because actually, I mean, I was terrified when I found out I had to play an aerialist. But it's, you know, it's I trained and trained and trained. And uh, the people, the circus people really gave me confidence. And, and, um, and I took off, which is a miracle. The thing is with her as well, she is such an adaptable actress. Yeah. You know, she just, whatever she puts her, her mind to, she just... She actually, I mean, she's done, uh, yeah, I mean, she always does a variety. Of, I mean, most people will know from Bond, but there's obviously, you know, the one that, the show that you Oh, Penny Dreadful, Penny which Dreadful. was, oh, I, she, well, that was her show. I mean, she was amazing. Because I only saw bits of that. I, I need to, really need really to sit do, down You really do, because it's proper right gothic horror. Street. Yeah, yeah, you, you you really are missing a treat with that. But she was she was wonderful in that. She does she turns up a little um, kind of latterly into into the into the film. Um, but she definitely yeah, it's becomes, about, yeah, it's kind of like a half. This, yeah, yeah, about I mean, the half. I, I, I see it as like it's like you know where there's the original animation was very much that was the first half of the film. And then the second half of the film is kind of like what happens after the original animation. Ah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, because yeah. when you think, because it was like it was was it two hours about? I think the film. Was, it, but, was yeah, it was like about hours. that. Yeah. And it was like that whole build up and Dumbo and flying and stuff. And then, if my memory serves, that was the end of Dumbo, and all that other stuff with Michael Keaton and, and with Eva Green was just. I mean, there was a lot of it that was added in there. You know, it didn't have the Colin Farrell kind yeah. of like character. It was it was it was much more centred on on. Dumbo himself. Yeah, and and actually, I, I when we'll play Colin Farrell in a, in a minute, but it was interesting about what he was. I thought perhaps because he comes with a, a backstory, just coming back back from the war. Yeah, the the circus has changed. His wife's died, and he's very much kind of fitting into family life and how the church, the circus has evolved and finding his place. Um, where he sits within his family yeah. and and within the, the, his work environment as well, and I wondered whether that was the the lure to to taking part in the film, but that yeah. actually wasn't the case. It wasn't. But he will tell us now exactly what, what that was. Exactly. Your character's very much adjusting to a new way of life when he comes back to family and the circus. Was that something that attracted you to the role? Um, that wasn't something that jumped out. What attracted me to it, to be honest, it was more to do with working with Tim. And I did like the script and I was moved by the script and I thought it was entertaining and it was, had a, a very clear feel-good factor to it, but uh, working with Burton was kind of the primary reason why I was excited about the prospect, you know. The, character, the characters are very nuanced as well, was that something? Um, I just, just black and white? Yeah, no, hope not. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's not the most detailed character piece in the world. I mean, the, these characters are, they feel to me like they're archetypical, like they represent, each character represents a stage in life or a particular quandary that they find themselves in. So it's just a, fun to take what was on the page and also keep an eye that you made it accessible to kids and families and because there are some heavy themes that are dealt with in the film, but they're done in a, in a, with a lightness that I think makes it accessible to a broad range of people. And, and actually what's interesting about what he says there is I very much anticipated going to see the film needing a tissue or a hanky in my hand because I was going to cry. Yeah. And it, 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 it definitely kind of takes there, on an yeah, emotional exactly, journey, yeah, it does, it but, does. It, but, but it, it wasn't harrowing. No, it's, it's not that kind of film at all. And yeah, it could be. I mean, especially these days, they want to make everything kind of dark, and it doesn't. It keeps it. It keeps enough of the like the darkness there, just to keep it a little. I'm not grounded isn't quite the right word, really, especially for a film about a flying elephant. But <laughs> but yeah, it, it it has that balance to it that that keeps it stops it from feeling too light and fluffy, 
and and also stops it from being too dark as well because obviously Tim Burton can do dark and he can do it very well so uh, yeah it was, it was great it was just a lovely film just it's one of those films it was just yeah. Yeah, you just go into it and you just come out of it with that nice kind of like glow and partly you reminiscing and partly it just yeah it's just it's nice to see those kind of like decent family films now yeah absolutely and, and Disney are on a roll at the moment and so that's in the cinemas at that the is moment now. yeah it's all it's already out in cinemas so the next one that we're going to talk about is Children of the Snowland, and that's uh, distributed by um, Curzon Home Cinema. And it's a remarkable documentary, isn't it? It is. It's fascinating. Yeah. It, it was, it, you know, I, like most, most of the time when we have screeners, if we're lucky enough to have a screener at home, I'm working. I'm more than likely editing something. And... And in a lot of cases, it's sort of like Claire has to watch something. I'm busy, so it's like you you watch it, you're fine. I'll I'll just I'll kind of get on with my stuff, and that, and that was the case with with this. But you, I just couldn't sit and and carry on working because it just pulls you straight out of anything like that, and and it just and it grabs you in because it's a very, very much that human interest story, and and, and yeah. a window into a, a life and a civilization that we do not outside of Hollywood, which would be a very different kind of like angle that they would take if it was being produced as a as a fictional piece and i just i, I just found it an absolutely fascinating piece the the, the kids um that they were the were the, 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 the subjects of the of the documentary and the journeys they go on and have been on and just it was just it really was something else it would be, well because what, what was it was a real education it, and, and the premise of, of the documentary is that for the for families that have that live in kind of the remotest um, areas of and, and villages in Nepal in the Nepali um, mountains in the Himalayas. Um, they take their children to, to school in, in Kathmandu, and because the because the the sheer remoteness of where they live, they drop their children off to school, and then they don't see their children. They're about four years old, yeah. and they don't see their kids till they're sixteen. Um, and so these, they, the, the documentary filmmakers who are British take the, the three subjects and we follow their journey back home to, to meeting their parents. And it's very much an emotional journey on, first of all, these kids feeling rejected. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, then there's this excitement of seeing their families and then how these kids adapt once they're back home and how they bond and form yeah. relationships with and and actually how they come to recognize the sacrifices that parents make for their kids and actually being a good parent isn't always about just being there day in day out and it was just such a wonderful journey the kids were so inspiring and and seeing them go up on you know, a, tre a treacherous trekking in, in yeah, into the, like, the. What was one of them? Like three weeks. One of the it was like three there? three weeks to get to get home, if not if not longer. Um, and they go away as kids, and they come back as adults. And yeah. I, and it was, you know, this is what's wonderful about you know docu documentary, yeah. isn't it? Again, it's you know education, and um, we were lucky enough to again to interview. The, the the kids yeah. and and the, and the filmmakers, I mean it might be worth speaking to the filmmakers or hearing the the interview with the filmmakers. All of our interviews, by the way, can be found at premierscene.net. So if you voice. do have any, um, you know, if you do want to see the further interviews, well, we'll put the then descriptions are... down in the uh, or the links in the descriptions. Yes. If I get my words absolutely, right yes, way, in right the in the notes round. below, in the description, so in the description below. So we'll have links to all the sort of like the both the. I mean, what we as you will know if you do watch our stuff, we'll bulk load all the interviews together and run them through in one solid piece, and then we'll break them all up as well as each separate like little one. So we'll make sure all of that is in the descriptions. If you're yep. watching this on YouTube, uh, if you're not. Um, then go to YouTube <laughs> and look us up. If you're listening to us on iTunes or on SoundCloud, then you, we have a YouTube channel. We have a website, yeah. um, which will also be relaunched, which it's, it's currently running, but we're going to be having a, we're having a revamp vamp within the next uh, uh, few weeks. Few weeks, yeah. yeah. We'll have a, that will be launched, um, so things will be easier to find. Um, but yeah, if you're you, just listening to this as a standard podcast. There is a visual treat for you as well. Um, so you just need to, yeah, just go, we'll, we'll have the, yeah, go to YouTube, type in Premier Scene, 
Bob's there. your uncle. Exactly. Bob, Bob, Bob's your uncle. But you know what? I, oh, it was, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in such a, a blessed position that, you know, meeting the, the, these kids and, and interviewing this young girl and, and just seeing the raw emotion that she had with, with, with meeting her mum and just how much respect that she had for her. Yeah. And she was still, you know, it was still a very raw emotion. And this documentary was made, you know, a few years ago. That You know, they're now in their 20s. Um, so, you know, um, it was, it was kind of heartbreaking even interviewing her really. It was, she was a very special young lady. Yeah. She, she you see, she got quite emotional. About yeah. it. And it's very, um, it is, it's that you don't know, they don't know what the parents were thinking at the time. Yeah. So they don't really know the reception and think they're going to be open with, have, you know, with open, uh, with open arms. Yeah. 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 Welcome with open arms. Welcome with, op with open arms. And that's not necessarily... What happens, but there is a reason for that, and it isn't because they don't get. It's just, it's, it, yeah, it's extraordinary. Just, yeah. yeah, it really is. So the interview of the filmmakers is eight minutes. So there is, is there a specific point where do you remember where you asked a question where we could skip to? Oh, well, we could. We yeah, yeah let's go to the, go, the, go. the first and, and how they became acquainted with. Huge congratulations with the film. I mean, this is such an emotional story on so many levels, and I, I wondered. How on earth did you become acquainted with the school and, and the story of these guys in the first place? I mean, we first were doing, uh, lucky enough to be doing some charity filming for an awards and some people had done some amazing work and built a small school in Nepal and we first went there to film that story. We kept in touch with those people and then a couple of years later we found they were supporting this school. We didn't know why, they explained what it was, sending children home and we asked why they needed to do that, how long had they been away and when they said 10 years, 12 years, it just blew our minds and we had to find out more. And when you were first approached the school, did they were they reticent or were they sort of open to a, a, a foreign film crew coming in and, and finding out more about? It? I think because we had the connection with the charity that funded the going home trip, who were also at that time like funding teachers' salaries and things like that. They were really open to us. That kind of opened the doors, um, and they're really you know grateful and and pleased that their story is being told to the world because they struggle, you know. And so it's really nice. The more people that know about this story, the more people maybe could help in future. So for them, I think they always saw it as a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's incredible, isn't it, that the sacrifice that that yeah. people do, and and, and this. You know, this definitely, definitely shows that. Well, it's and it's because even though some of the stuff that you're watching, and you think, oh, you know, I, I, to that, how do people live like that? Which is very, some would say, primitive. Whether that is the case or not, just my personal observation of that. It's just like you know the way they are. The way you know you haven't got they haven't got electricity. I don't think. No, the no, they, they haven't. To, and they so haven't got very to, a toilet. You know, literally, it's it's a hole. And, it's a and hole. You go, yeah. And yeah. But it's also how these these kids have been away, and that they've got to go and adjust to it as well because they're not even used to sort of like living in that in that kind of environment yeah. like that. They're used to the you know the common yeah they've got their iPhones and, 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 and yeah, yeah, got, yeah they've got absolutely. iPhones and, and running water and electricity and things like that. And then all of a sudden it's just like no, and this isn't just a visit. This is their home. This is what what was their play. It's just and 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 just seeing that how they how they had to. And, and, it just, is, it's and, like and, and the emotional the you... journey that they have to go on. I mean, it's it's it makes you do a bit of soul searching as well. Doesn't yeah, it, it is. Really? It's it puts things that... into perspective. It's it one does, of those, yeah. doesn't it? Because that you see how they do change. It's like you said at the beginning. They do change from what they were to, to like being to, 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 to essentially being kids and to being young adults mm -hmm. through this thing. So yeah, it's fascinating. So this is what the uh, first snippet of the interviews are. What the I, I shouldn't keep calling the kids, it sounds very patronising, but anyway, the children of the mountain. Yes, of the snowland. Of the snowland. Congratulations with, with the film. Um, first of all, having made the film, are you glad that you actually went ahead and made this film? Uh, I'm really glad uh, being made this film because uh, we are able to tell uh, every people who are related to these stories so it's a very glad and uh, proud moment for us uh, that a uh, lot of people are engaged uh, similar story a lot of pe uh, children have similar story than us so it's uh, really great uh, glad then it motivate them to be uh, like never give up and come m move on keep moving on when you started to make the film did you ever did you was there ever a time where you thought oh i wish i hadn't agreed to do this or were you always happy to go on the journey of making this yeah, well, 
we want to you know t with the help of our director we want to do the film because uh, we want to show the world that there are still uh, a lots of children in the high himalayas and the remote areas so we need education for their bright future uh, so on the way like we have like we uh, we have to face many struggles and difficulties so it was very hard for us and and though it was adventurous and the uh, uh, and going to village was you know also the feelings uh, give us like encouraging encouraging us to go back to village and see our parents um, because we haven't uh, seen them for more than 12 hour 12 years so it was very touchy one when you um, when you you go to meet your families will you did you ever hesitate to was, because it was such a personal moment and it was such a lot of anticipation um, were you happy to have your experience of meeting your mother for the first time again in so many years were you shy to be on camera to share that uh, I was very excited that time and I was expecting many from my mother because I'm going to meet my mother after many years two billion years it's not a short one it's so long so um, I was expecting more but my mother uh, got shy on the camera so uh, I I was ex expecting more but there is nothing I get and I later I asked about that and my mother says I feel very shy that time and uh, others there is others people also so she feel very shy and she said that is my first time on the camera so I can't uh, express my feeling that time she said that a uh, later one so it was really great moment for me yeah mm -hmm. They were the greatest. They're some it was, really lovely kids. They, they were really lovely kids, and you know, I, I think we're just very privileged to be in the in the position where we can actually meet them and help spread the word and tell their yeah, story. Yeah, exactly. Which is, you know, this is the point you of know. what we're doing. You know, now we're doing the podcast, and it's not just about us rattling on, uh, <laughs> giving our giving our two pennies on films. You know, it's just help. There, there are certain films that aren't going to get a lot of promotion. Yeah, we want to champion and, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, I don't know if you got Dumbo, which is a, it's a big Disney film. We've got Shazam, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, which we're talking um, about in a minute. Which we're talking about in a minute. But there's films like this that aren't going to get, yeah. they haven't got Disney money behind them. They've just, they're just a small film. So if, if a few people just go and watch this, yeah. just for li listening to us sort of like... To, Spread the word. Just listening to us. God, I can't remember words out. I should have had a drink of water. <laughs> now I'm a man and I'm all like this. Never mind. Never mind. I see this you is the problem. I'm normally the... behind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Spray, spraying some uh, water over you, so to speak. Exactly, yes, but we'll leave it there. We'll leave, we'll leave that there. So Children of the Snowland, that can be found uh, on Curzon Home Cinema. Excellent. And so, Shazam! Shazam! <laughs> oh, how much what? fun did we have? This is five stars. Oh, yeah, I, I loved it. Just, it's just simple like that. That's my like five star review on the poster. Loved it. It was I just it was just it was really great fun. It was, you know, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of like the DC movies at present. Although I didn't see Aquaman, um, but the other ones I just that were quite gelled with. Whereas this is it feels like a, a slight return to form. Just fun, mm. and 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 Zach, who's who's a legend, and I can never say his name. Levi. Levi. Levi yeah. Levi. Um, just, just I found I found it quite surprising that he had to go to, through a load of auditions to get it because to me it was like it was just a shoe in because he's he does embody that kind of look of the character and and it was just like like the films of old from the 80s and I met, many of them mentioned like Goonies like Gremlins and Ghostbusters um it's that just that that just old school fun, old school fun bit of horror mixed in there not afraid to kind of shy away of like putting things in there that is a bit more frightening that kids are normally used to like Ghostbusters does um, like the, the 1984 Ghostbusters not the 2016 one um, so it was just it was just great fun I just I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to go and see it again that's that's how much I enjoyed it that it was it was and it, it just I, I mean I just came away feeling like really uplifted yes, yeah, and just did, like yeah. you, you laugh you know, there's a real emotional beat. Yeah. You know, with, with there's, you know, this is a um, a kid who is looking for his mom. Yeah, he's he's enters into this foster home. He's not adjusting too well, and um, 
and you've got and, and it, I don't know it was just it's so and you know this the, the way that they all kind of gel as a family and you know it, it doesn't hit the stereotype that you know uh, not all kids come from a loving home it isn't a Hollywood film in that respect it, you know it shows that you know children are rejected so you know there is this inclusivity isn't there yeah, there's that a, there's it's, a... not, there's, it's not a stereotype of that you know the that you know the rich kid it's, it's, it, it is. It's that. It's inclusivity and diversity. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and yeah. a mix of different, different cultures and, and different people, basically. And the, the film represents it in a way that isn't shoving anything down your throat. Yeah. It's just like you know, this is life, and this is a, apart from, you know, Shazam then becoming an adult, <laughs> and flying. You know, take that, uh, take that element out of the equation. But you know, the, the, which is what's important. And this is the thing with a lot of films, and a lot of these films that deal with fantasy. And, you know, as I will always refer to Ghostbusters, um, <laughs> the reason why those films work is because they're quite grounded. And the fanciful level works because you've got an area to kind of like believe in and think, OK, from this level, and there's all these people on this level, and they have to believe. And then that's how, it, th that's how the film essentially works. And so certainly how Ghostbusters work, you have grounded characters against the comedic characters like the Bill Murrays and all the rest yeah. and Shazam's like that there's there's a grounded element to it that makes the whole fantasy sort of like work and others have to come in and believe and and be a part of that journey and and, and that's kind of that's takes you as an audience member on that journey so you just come in, go into it and you just kind of buy into it and, and there's but there's, there's the, the whole full element as well is it kind of you know what we haven't touched on big which is probably where it's well, yeah, what, you exactly. know I mean, it's it, obviously from the comic book point of view, it, it's pretty it predates big, but. Um, oh, does it? When did it? Oh, I, yeah, it's I believe it's, it's, yes, yes, I think so. It's nineteen fifties, I believe, but don't quote me on that. I'm sure there's lots of comic book fans that can put me in my place there and correct me. Um, but you know, the whole thing about this this kid in, in an adult's body, then becoming accustomed to what's what's going on, and then trying and testing finding out he doesn't even know what his superpowers are let me in my hands let me in my hands <laughs> you know so you're going on this kind of like how kids would they would play an experiment and you know oh my god you know and element of surprise and 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 and, and, and zachary levi just completely embraces it and just runs with it and just yeah. you can see he is having a whale of a time and he really yeah i mean he is he's, he's lapping it up and and i don't blame him and and it's you know you know, with any of these things, there's always a there's a gamble, and you never know if any of these, especially superhero stuff at the minute, which if it's not Marvel, tends to have a bit of a tough time. But this one just works a treat, and he and he does play it very, and and you know, and again, and it's probably because of him as well, because it's like he's, you know, he he's like he he says in the interview anyway that he's like he's like you know he's a, a man in the it's sort of like he's got he's still a fourteen year old at heart, so. But that just comes over on screen perfectly. And you just go away with it. And it doesn't get bogged down and heavy at all, even in moments that could be a lot darker. It just still seems to keep it up and keep it bright and light. But again, it's like, like we discussed with the Dumbo. There's enough there. There's like, it doesn't get too light and fluffy. It's just like, yeah, there's enough. Again, there's enough kind of like textures going on to help it keep it grounded. And I, yeah, I just, yeah, I thought it was great. And we've got Mark Strong as the villain. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Again. Every British actor makes a great every, villain. Every British actor, Mark Strong. Mark, Mark Strong is British and he plays every villain, so it just kind of limited to every British. Like, no, he, he's just he's he's great, Mark Strong. You know, I, I, he's just because he's, he's so believable. Presence. Yeah, yeah, he has such a screen presence, doesn't he? Yeah, and you get it. Like, I was funny. It was in the what did I going to see us? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, is, yeah. which is a conversation for another for another podcast, which was fantastic. But specifically, I think for the horrors. So you don't really see, when you go if you go to view cinemas. So you've got that hello. Oh yes, that you know, is my turn your yeah. bloody phone off. That <laughs> basically that message. Well, he does one specially for the horror. Oh, it does. It does like a, I can't remember where he says it now, but he, he says it slightly differently, and as a slightly few different lines of dialogue, just make it. You know, you just basically sat watching a horror film, and it's great because he's he's just one of these great voices that to bring into it. So. You, well, you know, I've got I'll, I'll share a really funny story. I, I I had a bit of a geek out moment one day. I was walking down Soho, and. You know when you should disengage brain before opening mouth, right? So I'm walking down Soho and there's Mark Strong on a, on a mobile phone. And, and I just shouted out, Mark Strong! <laughs> In case you don't know. <laughs> and he just turned around and he went, hello? And I went, oh, hello, oh, I've interviewed you before. And he went, oh, all right. 
like, nice to meet you. And I said, nice to meet you. Thanks a lot. And off he carried on with his <laughs> call. I was just like, you know, when you just think, I wish I hadn't have done that. <laughs> but anyway, he but was, he was very cool. He was, and it was one of your funny stories, I suppose. But yeah, I, I did feel a bit of a nincompoop. But, it, you know, it doesn't do any harm. Gets no. Your and I think it does, we didn't catch him at this in this carpet but we have interviewed him before no, a few I, times and he does remember who you are yeah no he's 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 really good and have to we have to talk about the event actually because that was also like a lot of fun we were taken out of leicester square we were on the south bank and they dressed the red carpet as one of the scenes in like a winter wonderland because it's all yeah. set around christmas which exactly. also makes it even more magical, yeah there was like a winter really? wonderland and it was and it's and it's and i'm just thinking about it now because there's a few actors that do you know, because the, the the people we interview, the director, things like that, they directly reference Gremlins and things like that, and they have actors from Gremlins in it, and oh, really? from the DC universe. They've appeared in DC stuff before. Yeah, um, uh, the, the the one who plays Mark Strong's dad, it's in Gremlins too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, I like him as an actor anyway. Yes, he's yes. in Small Bill for years as Lionel Luther. <laughs> he's, he's quality. So, but yeah, I mean, it's and the the, the, the correlation between us. We met Zach. A few, years, a few years ago, I was in the UK and he was shooting Thor was, 2. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was um, one of the Warriors 3. That was it. And we uh, had mutual friends and we ended up hanging out with him a couple of times. One of those occasions was the Winter Wonderland. <laughs> where <laughs> I remember him in liking... Park, yeah. what you call him, the big German... So the big German beard. Oh, the, 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 the... Yeah. Um, things. I can't remember what they call them. What they call them? Empty, if you're talking to Zach. <laughs> I think it's basically what you call them. Um, and so, and so we, I remember us... Enjoying that and and walking through Hyde Park, singing, "Hey Jude" and California dreaming. And California dreaming. Yeah. So that was it. So that was our that was our time with Zach. So that yeah, was our and, and he was really connection. lovely. I have to say, yeah, really, really well. very genuinely a nice person. Should we? Uh, well, but find out for yourselves. See a little snippet. See a little bit of snippet of of um, Mr. Levi. Hi, good to see you again. Yeah, yeah hi. Yeah. Can you remember Anthony? Yeah, hello, brother. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good to see you, man. It's lovely to see you. Congratulations with the film thank as you well. Thank you so much. Thank what a thrill. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's really, really dreamy. Well, I would imagine that when you get a script that allows you just to embrace your inner child, it's an opportunity that you just can't turn down. Uh, no, not at all. I mean, these are so rare. First of all, super, you know, to get a superhero movie is like pulling the brass ring. I can't believe at my age and at this point in my career that I was able to fool these guys into giving me this job. Um, but beyond that, that it's such a unique and fun superhero to play. I don't, I, I since I was a little kid, I dreamt about being a superhero. Since I've been an actor, I've dreamt about portraying a superhero. So all of my dreams are coming true, which give, gives me a lot of joy and a lot of enthusiasm. And I didn't have to restrain any of that when I was bringing it to life. That all just helped me be the 14-year-old. So it's super fun. And, and of course, the story has such a lot of heart. It, it, it's an un unconventional family story. Was yeah. that something that attracted you as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think the entire, really, the, the, the entire script is, is, is full of... Uh, great things thematically, good versus evil, obviously, wish fulfillment, but the family dynamic is the beating heart of the movie, which also, you know, kind of helps liken it back to things like Goonies and Gremlins and, you know, because there's also some creepy weird stuff in it too. Um, but specifically our family, you know, it's, a, it's, it's quite a diverse family. I mean, we're racially very diverse. You have a handicapped child and all of the kids are foster kids. I can't think of another movie that represents the underrepresented so much and, and and for it to be in a superhero movie is just like icing on the cake i'm so i'm grateful that a lot of those foster kids who you know particularly i can't think of another movie that they can relate to as much so i think that's really beautiful that's it. yeah really and it, it, it yeah i mean it, it that kind of i suppose top touches on what we were we were talking about earlier on but you, you know it, it, it you know with having that kind of sort of seriousness and sort of groundedness anchors the film, doesn't yes. it, really? Yeah, it and, does, and it yeah. gives you the, you know, the opportunity to then expand it and just run with it and enjoy all the goofy bits. Yeah, exactly. That goes yeah. On. So they, I mean, yeah, you have to congratulate the, the film, like the, the film. Yeah, they have. I, I really think they've done something, you know, whether, whether it continues more with, with the whole DC universe thing and how that's going to kind of pan out. But I hope they do another one. As, a, as, an, as was, an individual film, it works though, doesn't it? It really? does. It works really well. So, you know, there's plenty of tie-ins to the, to the other DC heroes, but it doesn't, you know, weigh on those in any way or rely on them in, in any shape, way or form. So it just works 
purely as it was what it is. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I really hope it does well because I'd like to see more of it. So yeah. And that's and that's out. I believe this Eleven Friday. April. It, yeah. Uh, no, the fourth. Friday the fourth, and that is distributed that's, by Warner Brothers. That's what, no, th tomorrow's the fourth. It's the fifth. Fifth. The fifth. Let's find out. Oh, Let's find it, out. Have we got it in our description? We shall yeah, see. It, it is on the Premier Scene website. Oh, if it's on the Premier, is it? It is premierscene.net, Anthony. Let me go to premierscene.net. <laughs> Again, links will uh, links, be in the yeah, description and also if you're watching this on YouTube. We've got more interviews with, with the director and the producer as well um, from Shazam who talk a lot more. He comes from a horror background. and um, Yeah, 5th of April. 5th of April, so Friday the 5th. Um, so definitely... Tell him we sent you. <laughs> yeah. Won't do you any good. Might even charge you more. But tell him we sent you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Shazam... Shazam! Yes. <laughs> and um, moving on to a very, very different type of film, At Eternity's Gate. Uh, this is distributed by um, Artificial Eye, again, part of Curzon. We're obviously championing Curzon. I love Curzon yeah, anyway. Is I love it as the cinema chain and, and the, the films... Um, the art house films that they represent and give a platform to. Um, At Eternity's Gate stars Willem Dafoe and he plays uh, Vincent Gap Van Gogh and it deals with a snippet in his life where... Um, oh, it's that one. I've seen the posters for yeah, it. I, yes, I was yes, going to say, yes. is it the Vincent Van Gogh? Okay. Yes, it is. And, and, and Willem Dafoe, I believe, was up for an Oscar for it oh, really? um because i think it was out, out in america before we got um we, we've that it's being released like over here but um it also has oscar isaac in it and mads mickelson, oh, mads mickelson. yeah legend. yeah mads mickelson is a priest <laughs> yes. It's not something you see every day from there hannibal to, <laughs> uh, hannibal to, to holy yeah 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 <laughs> Um, but it, it, the, 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 the cinematography, the textures of the film really kind of echo the, the style and the, and, the, and the textures of Van Gogh's work. And, you know, how you see him, but, you know, I mean, got, you, you say, like any artist, isn't it? You know, they say their work is worth more when you're dead than yeah. alive. And, you know, we really see him as this impoverished artist, really incapable of doing anything else but just being a painter and and needing to be by the light and um uh and and not being accepted by the i suppose the society is a recognizable artist whose work um is being very underappreciated yeah. um and you know it's in it's 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 really sad to see um him, his mind spiral, um, and and become you know more and more mentally ill, and how that's sort of treated, and yeah, it's 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 quite a slow burner. So if you want something that's just easy to watch, um, but he is really compelling, Willem Dafoe. I mean, he's an incredible actor, anyways. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I, I I don't think of anything. I mean, I haven't seen all of his films, but there isn't anything that I've seen of his that I've not liked. No, and and I yeah, because I don't I don't know much about it at all. Cause I, so I I'm quite interested to, to to like finally get a chance to go and see it, this and hear what your thoughts are on it because it's just yeah it's, it's William Dafoe at the end of the day yeah, and Max Mickelson and Mads, and Max Mickelson and, and Oscar Isaac. So anybody that wants to see him do other things than Star Wars, <laughs> I think we all want to see something that I can do other than <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah, it is Yeah, it is indeed. But you know, it's 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 really it's really good. And, and for me, yeah, it's just that the visual aspects of the film and just um, just how drawn in you are, and and it just m makes you feel, you know, it, it really again thought. Provoking. So does, does this lead up to the point where he dies, or you know what? Or is it just the window of of his life post ear up? Or... Well, you where you see that. Oh, you see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you see why he 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 does that as well. Um, do you know what? I saw it a number of weeks ago, so I, I can't quite remember. Okay, yeah, it'll be interesting. Well, let's play the trailer. Yeah, let's, let's so play the trailer, and so at least more about it. I love painting, I have to paint. I can't do anything else, and believe me, I've tried. 
You're Vincent. Yes, I'm Paul Gauguin. We have to create a new vision, a new way of painting. I spent all my life alone in a room. I'd like to find a new light for paintings that we haven't yet seen. There's something inside me. I don't know what it is. What I see, nobody else sees. You're a stranger here. You drink too much. You're hysterical, out of control. I don't want to calm down. It's called the act of painting for a reason. Go away! Don't you see that this painting is unpleasant? The townspeople have signed a petition against you. They don't want you to come back. You're surrounded by stupid, wicked, ignorant people. Sometimes I feel so far away from everything. Your vision of the world is quite frightening, isn't it? Yes. They say I'm mad, but a grain of madness is the best of art. Do you believe that God gave you the gift of painting to keep you in misery? Maybe God made me a painter for people who aren't born yet. Tell me, brother, am I a good painter? You're not a good painter, Vincent. You're a great painter. I wanted so much to share what I see. Now I just think about my relationship to eternity. Yeah, no, it, it is, and you, you know, you really get the the, the sense it captures this, this, this sense of isolation that he he's, he doesn't really fit into society, and he's almost he's, he's isolated in his head as well. So that the, I don't, where Willem Dafoe had to go to, you know, to yeah. um, you know, tap in deeply yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to 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 get that to get that character and be able to you know show an audience that this kind of inner turmoil i mean you know you what shows even just in the trailer there it's just you know when you're an artist it's a calling yeah and you know if you can't do that then there's nothing else in life worth while you, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and um i know willem dafoe is is astonishing in it and so i, I don't mean, that definitely looks really, I mean, it, uh, yeah on a technical level i mean just looking at mm. that it looks like they shot it quite rawly so it, it, like like handheld he just does his thing and you capture it i mean they do sort of like say that um i think it is with where film gets very technical for an actor where you've got to be finding your okay you got to hit your mark and you're in focus there the light's there you got to do this and do that and theatre to a certain degree, but there's a lot of rehearsing in theatre, so they obviously know where they've got to hit their marks and play the, playing the beats and stuff. Whereas something like this looks different, that he is just left to perform and the camera's got to adjust to his performance. Yeah, maybe a sense of improvisation. It, really look, it looks like he's done that, which, are, which looks fascinating, because then at least he can just really lose himself in it and not worry about, oh, no, 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 no. half an inch over there, the shallow depth of field, I'll have to do it again 20 times. And it looks like, so I'd be int I'd love to know sort of like how technically they, they yeah. shot that in order to, because there's a lot of films that tend to, to weigh now, especially with technology the way that it is, that you don't need, if you want, you can really pare it down, not having nice lights and everything like that. And going on, you can just kind of shoot in natural light. And I'm trying to think of the film. Oh, The Rev 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 Revenant. Oh, The Revenant, yeah, yeah, yeah. And natural yeah, light, yeah. Nice lights and stuff. So <clears throat> just something like that. And especially you know, when you're dealing with that creative, a it's it's nice to kind of explore ways to enhance that. Well, you, you, Van Gogh talks a lot in the film about need, he needs to be in bright sunlight because he, we start off in Paris and it's where, you know, he's told, you know, basically go out to the south of France because that's where you're going to get the most beautiful bright light that's going to help inspire you and and the work that you want to do and i and i really feel that the film echoes that sentiment oh, that's and that desire yeah. um do they yeah have him with his hat with candles on because i i remember when i was being taught art that he apparently had a hat and he had like candles around the hat so he could paint at night and so he could see what he was doing do you know i don't i don't remember seeing that but maybe he did i wonder i just i whether i just one of those things i always remember that mr redfern <laughs> uh, back in school, we would, we would, I just would, specifically remember the Van Gogh lessons and and him saying about where was it that seen one of his pieces? It was either a wheat or cornfield, or it was I don't think it was the sunflowers. And he said it was just it struck him. He said it was like something was on fire, 
and he was just at a distance, like, and you, just, you, you, and, you, and you walked up to you, saw it was this painting, which was just radiant. Mm -hmm. And and it was and it was Black Van Gogh's piece. I, just, I can't remember which one it was. Anyway, I'd, I'd have to research into his pieces to know which one he was actually talking about. But it always stuck in my mind that about about Van Gogh. And I think he does like any of the artists. He did seem the more you know, I don't know there's, a, there's lots yeah. of them over the eons. But there is something about Van Gogh in his, in his work that he did that really does sort of like stand out. It, yeah, yeah. Making it, a chair again, look again. interesting. Yeah, <laughs> and ahead of his time. Yeah, exactly. You know, which yes. a lot of them were. I mean, I, know, I mean, just, they're trailblazing. Dare yeah. I say it? Yeah, you know. This is it. It's, it's, you know, and, and these days I don't know whether or not. I'd love to know if there's if there's still the same thing. If there were artists that died in the '90s, say, and they're, they're now their works of art has become. I know people like Banksy and things like that are quite renowned, but whether art is viewed in a different way now. So it, I'm sure it is a struggle for artists. It's like absolutely any like kind any, of pre yeah. like, even any us, creative medium. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's a struggle, you know, most of the time, you know, it's every now and again, you'll get a, you know, a breath of like fresh air with, with something that can help you survive or move on to the next thing. But it's, it's always a struggle. And, and when you, you, and you go back to an era, era when they had a lot less and, and yeah, whether they really wanted that kind of thing because at the end of the day it's not putting food food on the table for people. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, just eras and how that changed. But anyway, that's a yeah. There are a whole a whole other podcast there exactly. To speak. And I believe that is in cinemas now. Yeah, that said, I think it said March 29th. I said I think it is March 29th. Said, so yeah, I think yeah, it said I thought it was, yeah, March 29th. Yeah. So March 29th. So, March 29th so that's in cinemas now, um, and definitely worth viewing. And that was Artificial Eye that are distributing. Um, that. Fantastic. And that really brings us to the end of the podcast. It does. I think we've actually been able to fly through all of we that. We have, haven't we? And uh, we could do a trailer reaction. Could we? There is a trailer out to the witch. Go uh, on then. Let's do it. Uh, you know, I know you I, have your I, 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 I should have held off, but it was one of those things. You, you see just couldn't Facebook resist. And you think, ah, I'll give it a go. Hang on a minute. Let me find it. Easily led, you see. Um, far is too easily led. Here we go. It's not this Joker, is, is it? It is Joker. Ooh. As we're in a DC sort of like mood. Yeah, let's do it. This is directed by um, Hangover. Oh, Todd Phillips. Well, Todd, uh, Todd Phillips. Wow. Yes. He's playing Joker. Joaquin Phoenix. Really? Well, that'll be interesting. It looks very different. I, and I, I really like the look of this. Arthur, does it help to have someone to talk to? My mother always tells me to smile and put on a happy face. She told me I had a purpose to bring laughter and joy to the world. Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. What? If you smile <laughs> to your fear and sorrow, smile. Tomorrow. <laughs> What's so funny? Just... Freak! <laughs> Gotham has lost its way. What kind of coward would do something that cold blooded? Someone who hides behind a mask. I used to think that my life was a tragedy. But now I realize it's a comedy. Just 
first game well, of Invincible Children. Yeah, yeah. I've got I got um, goose pimples. Yeah, me too. Oh my goodness, that really does look I very really dark, it doesn't it? Because I think we will be able to answer this, but my understanding is you'd never know who the Joker is. I think there might have been a point where they revealed, but he's never had a like a, a part. There's a TV show Gotham where there's. A, They've kind of set the backstory because you kind of see it as it unfolds. But you never really find out who he really is, where he really came from. As about the Batman film kind of, you know, it was Jack Napier, I think it was in the film, but in the Tim Burton one. But it's just, yeah, it's that looks really because I don't know, the, the director sort of like said it's not what you're expecting. And I see that. It's like that is exactly what I'm expecting. Something that's really kind of layered and 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 got that kind of like depth to it and think. He's just going to, it's just that, what's that point from someone who's actually okay and trying to keep it all together and it just snaps and he just goes mental and becomes Joker and it's just, what this is going to be. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> it, it do you know what? And, and Joaquin Phoenix is uh, somebody else who's incredibly durable and adaptable and really capable of going taking his kind of, uh, um, I mean, we saw the physical transformation there, but even mentally mm. sort of transforming to to really project somebody who is mentally very troubled. Yeah. It looks like he is about to kick off complete anarchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, doesn't it? And, and, and you know, in, in fairness, they are huge shoes to fill still, I think. Heath Ledger. Yeah. He will. He 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 has set the bar, hasn't he? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's not so, the last person to play it on cinema screen, but the only one you really want to refer to. No, well, yes, yes. Jack Nicholson's, which is Jack Nicholson's, just a legend anyway. So. Full stop. But yeah, no, I I I, I actually haven't seen. Um, what's but, the name? Haven't you seen Batman? No, no, I've seen that, but oh, uh, Jared Leto. Jared yeah, Letter. I haven't yeah. seen yeah. Suicide Squad. You so. know, it was just no, it didn't, didn't work for me. So uh, anyway, tattoos back to all Heath over Ledger. his head, damaged. It was just so. <laughs> blatant and it didn't fi- I don't know it just didn't feel right at all and I yeah I wasn't I, it didn't yeah the, 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 there are certain characters I mean it is it is big shoes to fill because whatever you know most of the time that character is scene stealer you know you know Tim Burton's Batman is a masterpiece in his own right and um, and Jack Nicholson just you know commands the screen when he plays that character but he does anyway but he just there's something about when he plays Joker and the same way that Heath Ledger, he was just, you know, he just stole the film. Exactly. And so something like this, and this does look, oh yeah, I yeah, really, it really like does. That but looks... I suppose to, to round things off, talking about Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, to start where we began yeah, with exactly, Dumbo, yeah. what would be your feelings as to seeing another Tim Burton Batman film with Tim Burton being a much older and decrepit Batman? I just. <laughs> Just don't think about something like that. It's just I, 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 I there are Danny DeVito chucked oh, in. God, well, oh God! Well, if Danny DeVito finally was still alive as the Penguin, yeah. I, I, I just that, yeah. You know, that again, it's the shoes thing, you know, because everybody's wanted to have, you know, especially with Michael Keaton kind of going through this renaissance. He's not really gone away, but all of a sudden he's been doing things that. Are Very much back in vogue. Yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, sort of like his turn in Spider Man was like a turn for like the cinematic villains because they were all a bit sort of like hopeless until in then in he did it in Spider Man um, Homecoming and it was just that's a great villain. Even when you watch it for the first time and then he pops up, it's like, oh! It's like when you realize who he is, it's like, oh, yeah, exactly. It's just, it was yeah. just so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah it apart was from like what um, uh, Tom Middleton was able to do with Loki and stuff. Yeah, the cinema yeah. villains weren't, weren't really doing it until that. So to you know to get Timber and to do a Batman to do a Batman Beyond and 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 have Michael Keaton would be incredible, and I if someone at Warner Brothers isn't trying very hard to make that happen because they know that will make them so much money than <laughs> any of the DC stuff has done so far until Shazam comes out, um, <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah I would love to see that so yeah good old Burton. Burton for Batman. Burton, Batman and Keaton. Burton, Batman and Keaton. But if you're waiting for a Keaton, um, uh, yeah, Keaton film and a Burton film, go and see Dumbo. Yeah, Dumbo. So, there's a great section. If, Dumbo, you can go see Dumbo first and then you can go and see Shazam. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we'll, we'll, I think it's uh, time to close. 
that's it so thank you all yeah, for listening you. and watching if you're watching and if you're listening you're great thanks for listening and as and i said all the descriptions yeah. for the different videos that we've been discussing and playing uh, will be all in I said descriptions i see this is like just this description. I'm dehydrated but everything will all those will be in the, the descriptions please like and subscribe okay. and um I'll leave a comment i knew there was a third one comments leave comments. <laughs> only nice comments though please yeah, yeah we can't bother with the other ones we'll just delete them um so <laughs> um, yeah, and, and as followers. keith would normally say so what have you got coming up what have i got coming up um i've done a lovely um interview with carlos acosta um about the about a male um ballet dancer who has come from very humble beginnings and became um the first black um ballet dancer for the Royal Opera House and um, that is a, such a stunning um, film so we've got that one coming up next um, um, I'm just I'm, I'm back up to Birmingham this week to do more work on the Those Busters Dock and yeah. continue the grey to get that finished so um, again those final kind of stages just yeah. like you know like little steps forward it's very weird to be at the point where it's it's basically finished you just it's just those kind of like refining things we've been working on it all week just getting a few things kind of tidy so that makes the whole grade process much easier which i'll be doing tonight as well um and that is basically that it, it from from our side of it so yeah. i think so so thank you very much for joining us please spread the word follow us on twitter uh give us a like on facebook facebook instagram um, SoundCloud, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks yep. a lot. See you later then. Bye. Bye.